Hi everyone, my name is Sarah Dokovo and I am the Program Director at SELF. Today's webinar is on executive function and distance learning, and it is our newest resource in our COVID-19 resource library. The purpose of today's webinar is to support teachers and families with developing structures to support students' executive function skills. At SELF, we ground our trainings in Universal Design for Learning, a framework developed by CAS. The goal of Universal Design for Learning is to remove barriers to accessing, to accessing instruction. One of CAST's nine UDL guidelines focuses on providing options for executive function. This webinar will introduce the difference between nonverbal and work, verbal working memory, provide strategies to improve checklists so they can support students' planning and strategy development, and will review the Get Ready, Do Done model an approach that supports students in managing information and resources and monitoring their progress towards goals. Verbal working memory is a person's ability to do self-talk. They tell themselves what they need to do to complete the task. For example, when a parent says it's time to get started on classwork for the day, the child might respond with the following. All right, to get started on my classwork, I need to get my area set up. So I know I need to go get all my materials. I need to make sure I get my water bottle. And then I need to go to my workstation. Nonverbal working memory is a person's ability to build a mental stimulation of how things will play out. It's essentially doing a run through of the future and visualizing it. For example, when a parent says it's time to get started on classwork for the day, the child needs to use their nonverbal working memory to visualize the following. All right, I need to make sure I go to my living room to get my tablet that I left there last night. Then I need to walk over to the kitchen and get my bottle of water. I need to make sure that's filled up. And then I need to go all the way upstairs to my bedroom and go to my desk so I can get started on classwork. Many students have decent verbal working memory. They know the steps they need to take. But they do not have good nonverbal working memory, which allows them to visualize how to take the steps. So what might happen is when you tell them it's time to get ready to do their classwork, on their way to the living room to get their tablet, they see a commercial for the Avengers movie on TV and they think, hmm, I wonder what happened to my Avengers figurine. I bet my sister has been using it in the, in the sandbox. Oh, why would she take it without, without asking me? All right, now I need to go get that from the sandbox. And I, make, I need to hide it so she won't steal it again. All right, let me go do that right now before she comes downstairs and sees me. And then it's five minutes later. And as a parent, you're wondering why your child is playing in the sandbox when they're supposed to be getting started on classwork in their bedroom. So in order to support students in building their nonverbal working memory, we have to provide supports. The first support we'll talk about are checklists. We selected checklists because they are being used a lot right now to support students in keeping track of everything they must complete. And while checklists are good, they do not support verbal, nonverbal working memory because they don't require the student to visualize what needs to occur and how it needs to occur. If you think about it, 99% of the checklists being used are created by the teacher or by the parent. And if our goal is to increase students' nonverbal working memory, their ability to build a mental stimulation and see the future, what they need to do, if the adult is creating this, are the students having a chance to actually do the work? No. So checklists don't develop working memory. However, there are ways to adjust them to help create mental stimulations. So if you're a teacher, a typical checklist for your class weeks, your class work for the week might look like this. To increase the nonverbal working memory, all you need to do is to include a verb to each of these tasks. This will help students visualize how to do this. So you want to tell them exactly what they need to do with each of them. They need to read the chapters. They need to text their comprehension answers to the teacher. They need to create a trifold for their project. If you're a parent, your checklist at home might look like this. If you think about them getting set up for their classwork for the day. Again, to increase the nonverbal working memory, you want to include a verb to help them visualize how to do it. So it would go to this. They need to sign into the laptop. They need to plug the headphones in. They need to put their password list in the folder, get the calculator, because their sister probably was using it again, go to a new page and gather their pens and pencils. 
The second support we're going to talk about is called the Get Ready, Do Done model. And this is basically a very fancy upgrade to the typical checklist. The Get Ready, Do Done model was developed by Sarah Ward and Kristen Jacobson, two SLPs who are experts in executive function. You can learn more about them and their company, Cognitive Connections, at the website on the screen. And it will also be in our resources on the bottom um, underneath this video. The goal of Get Ready, Do Done is to plan backwards in order to execute forward. So students need to start with the done and need to think about what will it look like when I'm done? What does completion look, look like? Then, then they need to think backwards, what steps do I have to take to get done? And I need to think backwards, what do I need to do to get ready to do all this? What materials do I need? Once they know all this information, then they are going to work the plan. They're gonna get all those materials ready and they're gonna do all the steps for it and they will have the finished, done, complete thing they need to have. And the get done is what is the ultimate task they need to do to really check it off or submit it. So we'll go through these two examples from the checklist before. If you're a teacher and we're going back, they needed to read their chapters 12 and 13. So what it looks like when they're done is they have finished the entire book. They are texting you the comprehension answers and they are building out their trifold. What do they need to do to get there? They need to do these tasks. And you'll see, these are, you will see that these are the exact um, tasks that were on the checklist when we added the verbs to them. What do they need to get ready? Here are all the different objects and items they need. A way to make this even, to help build nonverbal working mem memory even more, but to have actual visuals of the different items they need instead of the text. So we'll look through another example if you're a parent. Oh, my apologies. The get done at the very bottom, you'll see. So once they've done all these things, what do they have to do to get done? They need to submit their project in Google Classroom by taking a video of everything they learned. So that would be how they really get done and are finished with it. If you're a parent and you're thinking about how they get ready for their classwork, here is what the done looks like. Here's what you think that their desk should look like when they are, means that they are ready to start and begin their classwork for the day. So what do they need to do? Here are all the tasks. And again, you'll see that this is the exact list from our checklist with the verbs added to them. What do they need to get ready? Here are all the items. Once again, to increase the nonverbal working memory, you can have actual images. They know what exactly they need to do. And then to get done, when they know that they are ready to start classwork, you might say they need to begin their classwork with a smile on their face instead of complaining about it. And I have one final example um, this is from a teacher doing distance learning. Um, so they have this, you'll notice that it has a lot of visuals and text with it to help the students really know what they need to do to get ready, what they have to do, and then how they get done. So we hope that these strategies were helpful. If you have any questions about them, please email it to info at selfnola.org. You will also see that under this video, there are two resources. One is the link to the Cognitive Connections website. We can find a lot more resources about the Get Ready, Do Done. They also have items that families and teachers can purchase. And then you also see a link to a, an editable Get Ready, Do Done template. Um, you can type directly into it or you can print it off and write on it. If you want to put it into a protective page sleeve and write with it marker and erase each day, we definitely recommend that. Thank you so much. Have a great day.